press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hi everyone. Hope you all listening to the classes, right? Okay. So in the last class, we discussed about the primary uh, sex organs that is the testes. Okay. So today I am going to talk about uh, the internal structure of testes. Okay. So today we will discuss about uh, the coverings of uh, testes. So before uh, talking with the internal uh, structure. So externally each testis is covered by three wall layers. Okay now. So the, this is the outermost uh, layer. The outermost layer is called as tunica vaginalis. Okay. So this is the outermost layer, which is the outermost layer, tunica vaginalis, okay. So this is the sac like structure, so having a celomic cavity, which is filled with a celomic fluid, okay. So internal to this, there is one more layer. So actually, uh, this is the, the second layer, what I am writing now. So this is actually the covering of the testis. Okay, so this layer is called as tunica albuginea. Okay, so this is the actual covering of the testis. Okay, so internal to this, there is one more layer. Internal to this, there is a one more layer that is the innermost layer that lines the testicular tubules. Okay, so this third layer is called as tunica vasculosa. Okay, so the first layer is tunica vaginalis. Okay, then the second layer is, the middle layer is the tunica albuginea which is made up of a dense collagenous connective tissue and this is actually the covering of the testis and inner to this, the third layer, one more layer is present. So it is present inner to the tunica albuginea which lines the testicular lobules, okay. So this is called as the tunica vasculosa. So this is a highly vascularized layer, okay, it's having the blood vessels. Okay, so these are the three coverings of the testis. So, from outer to inside, the outer one is tunica vaginalis, followed by tunica albuginea, and the third one is the tunica vasculos. Okay, now, then, see here, the middle layer, which is the middle layer here, tunica albuginea. So, this tunica albuginea, at some places, enters into the testis. Okay, so in the ways into the testis. So due to these innervations, okay, so septa are formed inside the testis. Okay, so these septa divide the testis into a number of compartments. Okay, now, so these compartments are called as Testicular lobules. Okay, so these are called as what? Testicular lobules. Okay, so in each testis, the number of compartments present in each testis is nearly 250 compartments. Okay, now, so in each testis, how many compartments are there? Then nearly 250 compartments are present in each testis. Okay. So, these compartments or lobules, they are also called the testicular lobules, are formed by the innervation of, that is the entry of tunica albuginea layer into the testis. Okay. So, now, 
in the testicular lobules you will find a number of a highly coiled tubular structures okay na like this so in each compartment there is a highly coiled a tubular structures are present okay na these tubular structures are called as seminiferous tubules what are this called seminiferous tubules okay so in the number of seminiferous tubules in each compartment 1 to 3 seminiferous tubules are present in each compartment okay na so the number of seminiferous tubules in each compartment is how many 1 to 3 seminiferous tubules are present in each compartment okay na so these coiled tubules are called as seminiferous tubules okay so the seminiferous tubules are the site of production of the sperm okay so you know that uh, the sperm formation will occur in the testes okay so where exactly the sperm formation will takes place in the testes so it is the seminiferous tubules inside the seminiferous tubules the sperm formation will takes place okay so the seminiferous tubules are called as the structural and the functional unit of testes okay so these are called as what highly coiled tubules are called as what seminiferous tubules okay so these are the sites or the place where spermatogenesis process is going to happen okay now these seminiferous tubules will open into a striate tubules so these striate tubules are called as the striate tubules are called as tubuli recti what are these called these are called tubuli recti okay now these tubuli recti opens into a network of tubules that is called as a network of tubes called rete testes okay so seminiferous tubules the seminiferous tubules will open into a striate tubules the striate tubules are called as what the tubuli recti the tubuli recti in turn opens into a network of a tubules these tubules are called as what rete testes okay so what i am writing now this is a rete testes okay okay now the rete testis will open into uh, another 10 to 12 fine tubules which are made inside the rubbing of columna ciliated epithelial cells so these are called as vasa efferentia so vasa efferentia how many number they are 10 to 12 in number okay so this is what uh, the what are the, all the structures which are present inside the testis so inside the testis there are number of compartments how many compartments about nearly 250 compartments okay na in each compartment how many seminiferous tubules how many seminiferous tubules are present in each compartment nearly 1 to 3 seminiferous tubules are present in each compartment so this is the main question okay na how many seminiferous tubules are present in each compartment in each testicular lobule okay na and the number of testicular lobules is 250 okay and the seminiferous tubules will open into a striate tubules that is called as tubuli recti the tubuli recti will in turn open into a network of a tubules this is called a rete testis and rete testis will in turn open into a uh, another tubule uh, vasa efferentia okay now the vasa efferentia will leave the testis Now they conduct the sperms which are produced in the seminiferous tubule to outside the testis. Okay, but all these are 
vasa efferentia, retter testis, tubula erecti, semiferous tubules. Okay, so these are all present in the inner side of the inside the testis. Okay. So we will come to know the three coverings, tunica vaginalis, outermost layer followed by tunica albuginea and inner is the tunica vasculosa and inner side number of compartments, 250 compartments and in each compartment there are semiferous tubules, 1 to 3 semiferous tubules, tubuli recti, rete testis and vas of referential. Okay now? So this is what the internal structure. If you take a section of this test. So, you will say, let us discuss uh, the tears of testis. Okay. So, if you take a section of the testis, so we will find uh, uh, the outermost again uh, covering. Okay, now. So, having uh, three layers and inside the testis you will find number of Coiled tubules, no. What are these coiled tubules called? The coiled tubules are called as the seminiferous tubules. Okay. So these are the seminiferous tubules. Okay. How many seminiferous tubules are present? How many seminiferous tubules are present in each compartment? So one to three seminiferous tubules are present in each compartment. Okay. Now, see, these are the seminiferous tubules. So the seminiferous tubules, no, the seminiferous tubules are scattered in the connective tissue. So surrounding the seminiferous tubule is a connective tissue. So around the seminiferous tubule there is a, a connective tissue. Okay. Now, in the seminiferous tubules, so each seminiferous tubules is lined by a germinal epithelium. Okay. Now, the wall of the seminiferous tubule is called as what? Germinal epithelium. What it is called? Germinal epithelium. Okay. So, this germinal epithelium is made up of, is having two different types of cells. Okay. So, the two different types of cells are uh, uh, the cells which are more in number, they are cuboidal in shape. So, these are called as the spermatogonia. Okay. So, these cells are called as the spermatogonia. Similar is spermatogonium. So, in between the spermatogonial cells, some specialized cells are present which are long and uh, conical cells. So, these are called as the subtoli cells. Okay, now. So, the subtoli cells are present in between the spermatogonial cells. Okay. So, where you find subtoli cells, the subtoli cells are present in between the spermatogonia. Okay, so I said here the site of uh, formation of sperms is the seminiferous tubules. Where uh, the sperm formation will occur exactly in the seminiferous tubules. Okay, so with the help of a uh, germ cells, the cells which are involved in the formation of sperms are the spermatogonial cells. These cells. So the cells which are involved in the Formation of sperms are called as the spermatogonial cells. Okay. So, in between the spermatogonial cells, other kinds of cells are present. No, these long conical cells. No, these are called as what? The Sertoli cells. The Sertoli cells will provide nourishment. These are called as what? Sertoli cells. Okay. So, these Sertoli cells will provide nourishment to the developing sperms. Okay. Now, Inside the seminiferous tubule, you will also find the different stages of spermatogenesis. Okay, like uh, so these are these are called as the primary spermatocytes. 
So different stages of spermatogenesis. So these are called as what? The primary spermatogenesis. Okay. Now followed by secondary spermatocyte. So these are the secondary secondary spermatocytes. Okay. Then followed by spermatids. So what are these called? Spermatids. Okay, so this is what the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. Okay, so it's having, so here the sperms are present. Okay, so these are called as the spermatozoa. Okay, so this is what uh, the TS of testis. In the TS of testis, you will find the number of Coiled tubules. These coiled tubules are called as what? The seminiferous tubules. Okay. So each seminiferous tubule is made up of a uh, layer, uh, the outermost wall layer that is called as the germinal epithelium. The lining of seminiferous tubule is called as the germinal epithelium. So this germinal epithelium is having two different types of cells. One is the sperm forming cells. The sperm forming cells are called as what? The spermatogonial cells, they are more in number, cuboidal in shape. Okay, now, so in between the spermatogonia, there are long conical cells are present. So these cells are called as what? The sertoleic cells. Okay, so the main function is they provide nourishment to the developing sperms. Okay, and in the seminiferous tubule, you will also find the different stages of spermatogenesis, like uh, the primary spermatocytes. Secondary spermatocytes, then spermatids and the spermatozoa. Okay, so here I feel only one seminiferous tubule. So in all the seminiferous tubules, the same arrangement will be there. Okay, now so here I feel only one. Okay, then in between the seminiferous tubules. So this is what uh, the connective tissue. So surrounding the seminiferous tubule is called as the connective tissue. In the connective tissue. There are a mass of a group of cells are present. So this group of cells are called as the interstitial cells. Okay now, or they are also called as lining cells. Okay. So they are called as what? Interstitial cells or the lining cells. Okay. So where interstitial cells are present? Interstitial cells are present within the testis but outside the seminiferous tubules. Okay. So I said uh, the important function of the uh, testis. One is the formation of gametes and another one is the secretion of uh, male sex hormones that is the androgen, right? Testosterone. So that is testosterone is secreted by which cells? The interstitial cells. Or they are also called as what? The lydic cells. Where these lydic cells are present? The lydic cells are present in the connective tissues present in between the seminiferous tubule or the outside the seminiferous tubule. So the interstitial cells are present outside the seminiferous tubule in the connective tissue. Okay. So main important function of lydic cells is the secretion of the main sex hormones that is the testosterone. Okay. So what is the function of uh, lydic cells? Secretion of androgen. Our principal androgen is uh, testosterone. Okay. So this is what the TS of testis. So if this is the functional structure where you can find uh, the seminiferous tubules. If you take a section uh, that is the TS of testis, you can see the uh, different types of uh, uh, cells which are present in the seminiferous tubules and uh, the different stages of spermatogenesis and uh, the lydic cells of the interstitial cells. Okay, now, understood clearly? Okay. Now, we will discuss 
uh, the cells, different types of cells which are present in the uh, testes and also the functions of different types of cells. So, namely, uh, what are the different types of cells present here? So, one is the spermatogonial cells, okay? And another one is acetoli cells and one more important type of cells which are found outside the testis is the interstitial, sorry, outside the seminiferous tubule, they are called as interstitial cells or the lydic cells, okay now? So, see your uh, one more thing, spermatogonia and the Sertoli cells, they are present inside the seminiferous tubules, okay? And the cells present outside the seminiferous tubules are the interstitial cells of the lydic cells. Understood? Okay. Let us discuss uh, the functions of different types of cells which are present in the testes. So let us discuss uh, the cells which are present inside the testes. which are present inside the testis, right? Okay. What are the cells present inside the testis? The one is spermatogonia. Spermatogonia. And the second one is Sertoli cells. Third one is Lydic cells and some immunocompetent cells are also present in the testis. Okay, no? So here the spermatogonia and Sertoli cells they are present inside the seminiferous. Inside the seminiferous tubules, whereas lydic cells and immunocompetent cells are present outside the outside the seminiferous tubules. Okay, so spermatogonia and Sertoli cells are present inside the seminiferous tubules, whereas the lydic cells and the immunocompetent cells are present outside the seminiferous tubule within the collective tissue of the testis. Okay, now. Now, let us see the function of uh, all the cells. See, the first one is the spermatogonial cells, right? Okay, now, spermatogonia. So, I already discussed what is the function of spermatogonia. Spermatogonia also called as May germ cells. So, spermatogonia are also called as the May germ cells. Where these are located? Where spermatogonia are located? The spermatogonia are located in the wall of the lining of the 
They are present in the lining of the seminiferous tubules. Okay, now and they are cuboidal in shape. They are cuboidal in shape. Okay, and they are diploid. Diploid means what? Having two sets of chromosomes. So they are for male germ cells, cuboidal in shape. They are diploid cells. Okay, now and they are present in the lining of the seminiferous tubules. That is in the germinal epithelium. Okay, now. So what is the function of spermatogonia? What is the function? The main function of spermatogonia is the formation of sperm. Okay, now. So the main function, important function of spermatogonia, male germ cell. Okay, now. So formation of sperm. That is the spermatogenesis process. Okay. So these spermatogonial cells undergo which type of cell division? So which type of cell division will occur during the formation of gametes? Okay, as the spermatogonia diploid, right? Okay, now, but the resulting gametes are always haploid. So then, which type of cell division will occur? So meiosis cell division will take place. Okay, now, so these spermatogonial cells undergo a meiosis cell division and gives rise to the formation of spores. Okay, so the cell division occurs here is meiosis. So what is the function of uh, Spermatogonia then, the function of spermatogonia is spermatogenesis, formation of sperm. So, you will come to know where exactly the sperms are produced, okay, now where they are produced, they are produced in the seminiferous tubules, within the seminiferous tubules and which is, by which cells, by the spermatogonial cells, by which cell division, by meiosis cell division, okay, now, right, then, another type of cells, so these are called as Sertoli cells, okay. So the presence of Sertoli cells is a unique characteristic feature of mammals, okay. So we'll discuss uh, the Sertoli cells. Sertoli cells. The Sertoli cells are also called as sustentacular cells. Okay, are they also called as? Nurse cells. Okay. The cells present inside the testes. One is the spermatogonia, and another one, another type of cells are the Sertoli cells. They are also called as what? Sustentacular cells, and they are also called as nurse cells. Okay. Now, so now where the Sertoli cells are present. Where the Sertoli cells are present? So Sertoli cells are also present in the lining of the seminiferous tubule. That is in the germinal epithelium. Lining of the seminiferous tubule. Okay now. Then in between the spermatogonial cells. Okay. So these are uh, long uh, conical shaped cells. 
okay so the presence of sertoli cells is one of the immune characteristic feature of mammals okay because the sertoli cells will perform many functions okay let us discuss the functions of sertoli cells one by one okay so sertoli cells the main function is nourishment the main function is what nourishment okay they provide nourishment nutrition to the developing spores okay then they will also give support and also give protection protection to the sperms and they will also collect the metabolic waste of the sperms so being shed by the developing spermatozoa so they collect the metabolic waste which are being shed by the developing spermatozoa and so the main function is they provide nourishment they provide support and protection to the sperms and they also remove the metabolic waste they absorb the metabolic waste which are being shed by the developing spermatozoa so apart from this so sertoli cells will also perform other important functions okay now so one more uh, important function is they secrete androgen androgen binding androgen binding protein okay now in short it is called as adp okay so there is androgen binding protein okay under the influence of fsh hormone okay once the once the males attain puberty what happens the hypothalamus okay now so that hypothalamus will release gonadotropin releasing hormones the release what gonadotropin releasing hormones okay so this gonadotropin releasing hormones are produced by the hypothalamus hypo sorry the release by hypo thalamus okay na so these gonad this increased level of gonadotropin release in hormones will act on the anterior pituitary okay so in response to gonadotropin releasing hormones the anterior pituitary will release the two important hormone one is the fsh hormone that is follicle stimulating hormone and the other one is lh luteinizing hormone okay so this fsh hormone will act on sertoli cells so the sertoli cells are having the receptors for fsh okay so the fsh will act on sertoli cells and whereas lh will act on ligic cells okay so the anterior pituitary will secrete fsh and lh fsh will act on sertoli cells and stimulate the sertoli cells to release androgen binding protein okay so what is the function of androgen binding protein okay so the main function of androgen binding protein is so fsh will act on the sertoli cells to release the androgen binding protein so the main function of androgen binding protein is helps in the concentration of testosterone hormone in the seminiferous tubules okay now see here uh, this is the seminiferous tubule okay so where spermatogenesis process will takes place but testosterone hormone the testosterone hormone is produced outside the seminiferous tubules by which cells ligic cells right okay now so testosterone hormone it is a 
it will play an important role in promoting the spermatogenesis process. It promotes the formation of sperms. Okay, now so the requirement of testosterone is in the seminiferous tubules where the spermatogenesis process is going to happen. Right? Okay, now so this androgen binding protein so it transport the testosterone into the seminiferous tubule. Thereby it helps in the concentration of Concentrating the testosterone within the seminiferous tubules. Okay, so what is the main function of androgen binding protein? So it has a greater affinity for testosterone. So it transports the testosterone and concentrates it in the seminiferous tubules where it is required. Okay, now so that is what the function of androgen binding protein. Okay, so apart from ADP, we also release the Tolly cells will also release. One more important hormone that is called as inhibin. Okay, so this inhibin hormone it is released by the Sertoli cells to check the over activity of over activity of FSH. Okay, so it will suppress the synthesis and the secretion of follicular stimulating hormone so thereby it regulates the spermatogenesis process okay now this is because the spermatogenesis process is influenced by which hormone the follicular stimulating hormone okay so this is the spermatogenesis process it is continuously happening in the seminiferous tubules okay so to prevent the excessive production of the sperm to prevent the excessive activity of the fsh the Sertoli cells will release which hormone? Inhibin hormone. So this inhibin hormone will suppress the synthesis and the secretion of follicle stimulating hormone. Okay. So thereby regulating the process of spermatogenesis. Okay. So the main function of inhibin is to check the over activity of the FSH follicle stimulating hormone. So it helps in the regulation of spermatogenesis process. Okay. And one more important function is it will secrete AMF. So AMF means anti mullerian factor. Okay now, so AMF is what? Anti mullerian factor. Okay, so what is this anti mullerian factor? See, mullerian ducts. So this mullerian ducts, no. So, these mullerian ducts are present in the embryonic condition. So, in the females, these mullerian ducts will go into develop into a ovary duct in females. So, mullerian duct later is present in the embryo. Later, it will develop into what? The later will develop into ovary duct or fallopian tube in females. Okay, now. So, in males, there is no need of ovary duct or the fallopian tube. Okay, so to stop the development of ovidar, anti mullerian factor is secreted by which cells? Sertoli cells. Okay, so this anti mullerian factor prevents the development of mullerian duct, thereby to the ovidar. Okay, understood? Now, so these are all the functions of Sertoli cells. Okay, so they are called nurses because they provide uh, nourishment. So they sustain the cell, uh, cell spores, so they are called as, they support, they give protection, they sustain the cells, they are called as sustentacular cells, okay, they also remove the metabolic waste and they secrete androgen binding protein, it helps in the concentration of testosterone in the seminiferous tubules, okay, inhibin hormone, it will also secrete inhibin hormone to the over activity of the follicle stimulating hormone and anti mullerian factor to prevent the development of mullerian ducts. Okay, so all these are the functions of Sertoli cells. Okay, now one more cells which are present in the testis.
the one more type of cells present in the testis of the lydic cells. These are also called as interstitial cells or they are also called as lydic cells. Okay. So where these interstitial cells or lydic cells are present? So these interstitial cells or lydic cells are present outside the seminiferous tubule but within the testis, within the connective tissue of the testis. Okay now, so what is the important function of interstitial cells? I already uh, told that the, the lydic cells or the interstitial cells, the main function is, okay, the secretion of male sex hormones. Male sex hormones. Okay, it's called the androgen. Okay, so the, the principal androgen is the testosterone. So the hormone testosterone is secreted by which cells? The interstitial cells which are present in the connective tissue of the testes. Okay, so now what is the function of testosterone? Okay, so the testosterone, it helps in the uh, production of, it promotes spermatogenesis process. Helps in the production of sperm. Promotes spermatogenesis. Okay, and this testosterone hormone, it is responsible for the development of secondary sexual characteristics in males. Okay. So, mainly responsible for the development of a secondary sexual characters in males. Okay. Now, so the secondary sexual characters are nothing but what? Uh, development of uh, body hair, development of uh, facial hair, mustache. Okay. Then, now. Uh, Low pitched voice, aggressiveness, more musculature body, a bone strength, a broad shoulder. Okay, all these are the secondary sexual characteristics that occur in the males at the time of uh, puberty under the influence of which hormone? That is the testosterone hormone. Okay, so the testosterone hormone is also responsible for the development of secondary sexual characteristics in males. Okay, and this testosterone, so the excessive concentration of testosterone also inhibit the secretion of gonadotropin hormones. So thereby suppressing the release of follicle stimulating hormone and LH hormone. See here, this interstitial cells, no? So these interstitial cells are stimulated by which hormone? LH hormone, okay? Which is released by the anterior pituitary, okay? So the LH hormone stimulates the interstitial cells to secret testosterone hormone. Hence, the LH in males is also called as interstitial cell stimulating hormone. LH is also called as what? Interstitial cell stimulating hormone, ICSH. Because it stimulates the interstitial cells to release which hormone? Testosterone hormone. Okay, now? That's So, by suppressing the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone, it regulates the process of Regulate the process of spermatogenesis. So, excessive concentration of testosterone, okay, suppresses the gonadotropin releasing hormones. Okay, thereby the FSH and the NH. Okay, and one more function is so this are testosterone secreted in the fetal life. Okay, now so what testosterone is secreted in the fetal life in low quantities? That helps in the descending of that helps in descending of testes. Okay, that helps in descending of testes into the scrotum. So in the last class I discussed the testes will descend into the scrotum under the influence of testosterone. Okay, now it's because of fetal or uh, testosterone. Okay, so all these are the functions of uh, testosterone. Okay, so it promotes spermatogenesis. Okay, it helps in the production of sperms and uh, uh, is responsible for the development of secondary sexual characteristics and they regulate the process of uh, excessive concentration, inhibit.
the release of gonadal protein releasing hormones and as well as FSH and LH are uh, thereby regulate the process of spermatogenesis and it also the fetal testosterone helps in the migration of testis into the scrotum. Okay, so these are the functions of what testosterone. So apart from interstitial cells, uh, one more type of cells which are present uh, outside the seminiferous tubule, but in the testis are the immuno competent cells. Okay, they produce the immune response against the antigen. Okay. So, all these are the different types of cells which are present inside the testes are they function. Understood clearly? Okay. So till now uh, we discussed uh, the cells which are present uh, uh, inside the testes and their uh, function. So in our uh, next video we will discuss uh, the accessory duct system. Okay now. So accessory duct system they are mainly responsible for the conduction of sperms, uh, storage of sperms and the maturation of sperms. So that we, we will discuss in our uh, next video. Okay now accessory duct system. Okay. Uh, the students, uh, today I am going to give uh, two assignment questions. So, you need to complete today itself and uh, you need to submit uh, those, uh, what are all the assignments questions are given now. So, once you come to the college, you please submit the assignment and I will check, check it. Okay. So, please uh, take down the questions.